Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Michael Maney begins now. Good evening, everyone. Independent David O'Byrne is set to table a new bill in Parliament this week aimed at protecting people and pets fleeing family violence. It comes at a time when coercive control is rife amongst communities, with Tasmania looking to fall in line with legislation in other states. They're considered part of the family, but for those escaping intimate partner violence, fears for beloved pets can prevent or delay leaving. Threats to their safety, actual physical harm to pets, direct physical harm to pets, and, um, and also lethality, actually killing pets is not unheard of. Despite it being recommended in a 2010 National Law Reform Commission, Tasmania, along with WA, is one of the last remaining states yet to explicitly recognise threats or harm towards pets as a form of family violence. We've heard stories around um, pets being harmed as a threat to this is what I've done to your pet and this is what I can do to you. A private members bill by independent David O'Byrne is hoping to change that. For those pets or animals uh, to be used as a form of coercive control, uh, as a form of threat uh, in this circumstance is, is outrageous. With reports of family violence incidences increasing within the last three years, the new definition also aiming to better assist those on the front line. It's going to help the police be also be able to recognise this when they're attending family violence incidences. Ahead of being tabled in Parliament this week, the government says it welcomes any bill that strengthens Tasmanian legislation. We will consider it and naturally we will get advice, talk to David and of course the Parliament will decide. Recognising the impact of family violence goes beyond the person targeted. It shouldn't take another uh, horrific story uh, for action to occur. We need to respond. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmanian News. Despite the emergency department at the Launceston General Hospital suffering from staff shortages over the weekend, the government says it hasn't affected patient care. It comes after the Nursing and Midwifery Union claimed only 18 nursing staff were rostered on yesterday, seven short of the industrially mandated minimum. When a person requires medical attention and presents at the emergency department, they will get the best of available care in a safe caring environment. In the last three months, 568 new health staff were recruited, while 436 left the department. An alternative proposal for the controversial Macquarie Point Stadium project has found financial backing. Proponents of the Mac Point 2.0 say their project's better than the original plan, but the government's not convinced. Releasing new renders of an alternative vision for Mac Point, Stadia Consortium says it could become reality, securing investment group Capella Capital to back the project. We've been working on shortlisting our finance partner for the last nine months. The consortium has secured billions in infrastructure projects around the country. Extremely successful in the last few years with the projects that they've been doing, but it's their um, experience in projects that are very similar to what we're proposing. Hoping to replace a multi-purpose precinct announced last month, the group submitting an unsolicited proposal to the government. It's a multi-purpose uh, entertainment, healthcare, lifestyle and does have in the centre of it a, a multi-purpose sports and entertainment precinct. But financial backers and new concept drawings haven't seemed to sway the Premier. Uh, there's one game in town for us and that's our existing Macquarie Point development uh, stadium proposal. Saying the existing proposal aligns with both federal commitments and the AFL agreement. We have got a very clear agenda when it comes to our Macquarie Point development. Rebecca Gatineris at 7, Tasmania News. A winter warmer has taken over the northeast with shellfish lovers turning out in droves for the Tassie Scallop Fiesta, the seaside town of Bridport cracking open for the popular festival's seventh edition. Around here, a seafood diet is the catch of the day. We've had them on skewers, we've had them uh, like with the pasta, you know, oh. uh, scallops in the sweet and sour sauce. Mm, I've tried this one that was on the barbecue, I loved it, with some bacon, it was really nice. 
2,000 ticket holders coming out of their shells, turning on an epic winter feast on Bridport's Village Green, the famous fiesta marking the start of scallop season. We're on the doorstep of the best bubbles wine in Australia. What other reason do we need to celebrate? The popular event doubling as a much welcomed off-season tourism boost. Creating a bit of economic activity, but also a bit of fun and a bit of... Uh, a bit of culture for the, for the area. It's events like these that really get people out into regional Tasmania and, and let them experience the beauty and the hidden gems of the North East. Long lines proving the secrets out, dishing up a sprawling seafood smorgasbord. I can't count the number of ways you can have a scallop, um, but uh, I think most of them will be available. They've been served up in many creative ways, but one fan favourite was nowhere to be found come lunchtime. We're told the humble scallop pie sold out within an hour. But with plenty on the menu, no shellfish lovers went home hungry. Oh, I love it here. I love the scallops. really good, actually. This is the first time for us here, even though we've just lived down the road at Lulworth, but it's just been awesome. And the scallops, beautiful, similar. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Dozens of bright minds have had a different kind of Sunday outing to the pub. A cross-section of community representatives coming together to brainstorm a slew of ideas and projects to improve connectivity around Launceston. They're to do with people in place, making it a thriving economy, welcoming visitors and uh, newcomers to the town and also helping people be more inclusive and diverse. Locals are being asked to have their say on what initial projects should be given the funding green light. Voting goes live on the Great Regional City website tomorrow. Good evening. Hobart and Burnie both 15 degrees today and 14 for Launceston and Devonport. The state's high 16 recorded at Friendly Beaches. King Island, Smithton and St Helens 15. We saw 14 on Flinders and Marai Island and also at Grove and Bushy Park. 13 the top for Low Head and Strawn and 7 for Laiweni. Low-level cloud was seen about the majority of the state today, which contracted to the west later this afternoon. The satellite shows a weak frontal cloud band moving to the east of the state. Tomorrow, the ridge remains over the south of the continent as the trough extends from the Territory into northern New South Wales. Northwesterly winds, 25 to 35 knots, about the south grading 10 to 20 knots, about the north with westerly swells increasing to 4 metres in the south. Tomorrow we have a gale warning for coastal waters between Tasman Island around to Low Rocky Point and a strong wind warning for that has also been issued for the central west coast. A fine and sunny Monday in Hobart tomorrow, 15, partly cloudy in Dover and Ouse, expecting 14 there. Showers on the way in the north, Launceston and Devonport 14 and 12 the high for Scottsdale. Wet weather extending to the west of the state, Burnie and Strawn 13 and 14 for Stanley. A small chance of rain for the east, yet remaining partly cloudy, St Helens and Swansea 15, and a range of 1 to 10 for Ross. Tuesday showers about the west and north, with light showers developing elsewhere in the afternoon. Wednesday showers about the west, far south and Bass Strait Islands. And on Thursday, light showers about the north and west, they're likely to increase in the afternoon and evening. 20 and partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow, 15 the high for both Melbourne and Adelaide. The coolest place to be tomorrow, Canberra, and they're chasing 13 degrees. Hobart, Launceston and Devonport all currently 9 degrees and Michael the days is starting to stretch out a little with spring just around the corner. Well that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Good night.